Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Saturday, January 17th. Um, thought I'd work on the truck a little bit today. I'm going to show you the radiator that came out of the 51 Chevy uh, was a honeycomb style radiator. I'm going to show that to you. And then I'm going to show you what I'm replacing that with. Uh, the reason that I have to go with a different radiator uh, is that one was really jacked up, a lot of uh, repairs on it and stuff. Uh, plus, with the S10 chassis, the steering box is right in the way uh, for the original radiator bracket. Okay, this is the radiator core support and the original radiator here. Uh, as you can see, the, the original radiator is pretty rough. So, Okay, here's what I'm going to go with. It's a uh, 1965 uh, Mustang radiator. A lot of guys have said that they will cool just fine. I mean, that this is designed for a V8, like a 289, so I'm sure it'll cool a 305 just fine. So uh, it's just a hair smaller than the original radiator that was in this. Um, it's got a transmission cooler, as you can see. One thing I will have to do is I'll have to cut the top off of here, right, right here. Um, so that the radiator can come up past that and then we need to leave all these bolts here because that's what the uh, the deck that the latch mechanism mounts into is connected to so I will have to leave all that intact all right and of course there's no more important piece of safety equipment than these safety glasses Okay, here it is sitting on the chassis, just clamped down. You can see there's not much clearance between the steering box and the and the brackets, so that should work okay. Uh, to get this centered on the chassis or the frame, make sure that you measure from the outside of the frame to the sides of the bracket because the uh, inside contours of the chassis are different because of the steering box being over here. So I measured the outside eyeballing it right down past the uh, kind of look straight down the edge of the uh, chassis. I believe it measures about four and uh, well three and three and seven eighths or three and fifteen sixteenths. That's pretty close. <coughs> uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to, on this bottom piece here, I'm going to have a slot in it from side to side in two places, and then on this piece here, I'm going to slot it this way so that I have about an inch of travel in all four directions. Hoping that I had everything close, you know, when I mocked it up, but that'll give me a little bit of room to tweak the sheet metal, align it so that it fits better when I get to uh, the point where I'm putting it back together. Okay, I made my marks pretty big so you could see them, but uh, basically I measured in seven and a half inches from each end on the inside and then uh, put a mark right in the middle going crossways. Okay, so here's the two holes I'm starting with, and what I'll do now is I'll drill a hole over here and a hole over here, and then slot it between on both of these. And then on the, the cross piece underneath, I'll drill a hole over here and a hole over here, and slot it this way. Well, the 4 inch, gr four inch grinder uh, was too big a diameter. Uh, it wasn't going to cut through before I extended past the edges of my bolt holes, as you can see. I thought Dremel tool. Well, I can't find my Dremel tool, but I'm going to try the uh, trusty old jigsaw with a metal blade in it. 
Yeah, just got back from the local farm supply store. I have one just like right around the corner, maybe three or four blocks away. Picked up some. These rubber washers are going to go between the uh, part that's welded onto the chassis and the uh, ra radiator support bracket. Got me some metal cutting blades and these will be the bolts that I bolt it together with. I got a lot of extra washers because that one, the part that uh, this is all sitting on is actually a piece of one by two inch tubing. So I'm going to maybe use some kind of adhesive between a stack of these and put them inside that tubing so that it doesn't crush when I tighten the, when I tighten the bolt down. And I got them a little extra long because uh, when I uh, go to put the sheet metal on, I may need to shim between the two pieces a little bit, you know, ra to raise the front of the uh, front clip up. I don't know yet, so just giving myself a little extra room to play with. So that's it. Well, that one turned out even better. Uh, just goes to show you that um, you don't have to have a shop full of tools. You can use a lot of different things to, to accomplish the same task. So. Okay, I'm going to clean these up. Uh, just a few of the rotary files that I have laying around. Uh, not sure where I acquired these, but uh, hopefully one of these will help me out. Cleaned them up pretty nice. Like I said, it's not perfect, and I I wasn't planning on going that wide. But uh, for what it is, I think it'll work fine. I could actually go with a bigger bolt, and that might even be a better idea too, because these are kind of they're only these bolts are only five sixteen. Here's a half inch carriage bolt. Might not be such a bad idea because that way it won't turn in there. It'll slide back and forth really easy. The only bad thing is if it ever starts getting rusty here or something uh, and it's hard to get the nuts off, about the only thing you'll be able to do is grind the grind the nut off of it to get it out. So. I don't know yet. I was actually thinking about uh, getting a strip of metal about the the width of the head or maybe just a little wider and run it from bolt to bolt and then weld each bolt like drill a hole in each end of it and weld the bolt to it. That way it uh, the whole thing could slide back and forth and the bolt will never turn. Uh, and if you're on the bottom on the nut um, down the road or something have to loosen it up uh, that bolt will never like back out and then spin it'll be welded to something solid all the way across here I still haven't uh, decided yet on that but that's a possibility Okay, here's how the slots turned out on this. Uh, this was out, I haven't cleaned them up at all. Plus, uh, they're at like uh, 5 16 right now. Okay, I know this is going to look really stupid, but what I did was I just took 10 washers and put some tape around them, and I'm going to slide that in the end of this tubing right here over there to the slot 
so that when I tighten this up, it won't crush the tube. Uh, I should probably actually use some adhesive between them, but I'm just going to do this temporarily, I think. So 3 eighths, I think, would be plenty. And that's uh, going to fit these slots just fine. So Okay, I think that'll work. Uh, do the same thing on the other side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put the motor mounts on here that I built uh, oh over a year ago, I'm pretty sure. Just going to put those on, set the motor down in here, and get an idea of uh, where the fan will ride in a relationship to the radiator. So what I'm going to do is kick the bottom of the radiator out about two inches so that it doesn't stick up past uh, where the old one did. It'll look a lot nicer and once you got the grill on you will never be able to tell that that's kicked out. Um, a lot of guys do this uh, and reuse their original radiators in this location with an S10 chassis. They have to kick it out because of the steering box over there of course. So. I think that might be the easiest and uh, it'll look better I think in the long run so I'll have to make some brackets 